Hey guys, so I went to Santa Clara University today for a legal seminar. Uh, lawyers have to take uh, seminars and continue in education to maintain their license. And usually it's, it's, it is a, usually a waste of time, but it's still fun because, you know, you've got some food, uh, usually complimentary. In this case, you had wine as well. So I don't drink, but I know some other people do. So, um, but it, it is a nice place to network. And once in a while, you pick up something that you wouldn't have otherwise picked up, um, you know, because a lot of these uh, seminars are very, very specific. And there's been an emphasis on practical education. And it's getting there. It's not there yet. But hopefully with that emphasis will eventually come a cultural change uh, that will help train people for uh, actual practice of law uh, as opposed to just sort of philosophy. But speaking of philosophy, it is important. Um, and I'll tell you what happened on, to me on the way to the seminar is that I, is that I asked a security guard you know, why he was charging me $5 to park on a campus. Um, and I told him I'm, I'm alumni, I paid $100,000 to this school. And I said that knowing that, you know, it's not really, he doesn't care, right? He's got some orders and if he's being told that he's going to charge $5 for parking, that's what he's going to do. Well, it turns out that, I, you know, that, that this is the first time I've seen this. So I said, wait, is this some sort of a policy change? Because I'm, whenever I come on campus as an alumni, I, I know I've never had to pay for parking unless there's, you know, a massive event of some sort. Um, and he said, okay, well, actually, if you're just here on campus, not going to the seminar, uh, then you don't have to pay for parking. So you can see that this is a little bit odd, right? Uh, because it, it appears to be that the, a nonprofit university is trying to charge people arbitrarily uh, in order to put more money into their pockets. And I have no idea who's making where that money goes, right? It's not a huge amount of money, which is, you know, even more odd as, you know, in the sense that why would you sort of harm your own reputation and your relationship with alumni uh, by treating them this way. In other words, by discriminating against them uh, and charging them, you know, some sort of small amount to park uh, when they're literally being invited on campus to attend a seminar, um, you know, that, that goes both ways, right? A seminar without people is useless. A seminar with people that don't participate in the audience is also, you know, almost useless. So you've got a situation where, you know, I asked a guy, I right, call your supervisor. And I've noticed oftentimes when you ask anybody in a security capacity to call the supervisor, and in this case, the phone's right next to him, they resist. And this makes no sense to me. It, in, it indicates a complete lack of training uh, because you shouldn't get into it with somebody who's obviously unarmed and, you know, uh, again, you know, who has a right to be on that campus because he's been invited for a seminar. It shouldn't be a situation that should escalate into anything other than, sure, here's my policy, you know, I've got to follow orders. Uh, let me call my supervisor and tell him that you're alumni and you've never seen this policy before. And so he wouldn't call, you know, uh, his supervisor. So I, uh, you know, I actually took out my phone and I said, okay, if you're not going to call your supervisor, let me videotape you uh, on my phone. And, and then, um, you know, let's see how it goes because I want to make sure you've got a record of this, you know, interaction and of this policy change. And then he called his supervisor. So, so think about what has to happen here. We're in a society in America where you can't get anything done unless you um, essentially put somebody in a position where their reputation uh, is in is at risk of being publicized. And so that is that is really, that should be a last resort. And for many reasons, that should be a last resort. But check this out. In response, his supervisor um, actually told him to take down, get my name and get down my license plate. And I said, you can take, I'm not giving you my name, but you can get my license plate. But think about this, right? You've got a complete disconnect between treating people who are coming onto your campus uh, with respect and dignity and this idea that's published all over the campus, right, about ethics, about, you know, how we care about reputation, how we, how we care about diversity. And all of that, I think, is unfortunately um, a massive disconnect when you're in that position where you're making these decisions uh, that make no sense and that have on the lower level poorly trained security personnel, as well as their, as their supervisors. So it, it goes back to a couple of things. Number one, why is this a problem? You know, for one thing, it's, it's a college campus, and a college campus is a nonprofit. They, don't, they basically don't pay taxes. Um, in addition, the reason it's a nonprofit is because it's supposed to make that community and hopefully society itself better. And you can't get there if you're creating all these arbitrary rules that make no sense, that discriminate on any class, on any, on any basis. Or they give you the appearance that we're just trying to profiteer off something, uh, off of guests. And you kind of have to ask yourself, well, how, how did we get here? How did Santa Clara University get to a point where it's, it's got all these policies 
uh, even though it's clearly got a, you know, a huge endowment, uh, the campus has been expanding for quite some time. And so you look at this and you say, well, you've got this, this entity that's, that's been expanding for quite some time that's charging about $50,000 a year in tuition. And you know, what obligations do they have to society when they're getting a tax break? And I think if you spoke to people on campus, they wouldn't consider themselves any different from a corporation. Uh, you know, they still have to make money. And there's, there's, some, you know, so there's some logic to this, right? You have to make money even if you're a nonprofit. Um, and ultimately, the difference between a, a, a well-run corporation and a well-run nonprofit shouldn't be too big. But on a fundamental level, you know, it, it matters how you train people. It matters how you conduct yourself to society. Because if you're creating barriers to people coming in on campus and you're creating a sense of a lack of training at the lower level that goes all the way up to a supervisory level, you know, you've got a problem from the get-go. You've got a problem at the entrance, and it doesn't bode very well for the reputation of your school. Now, let's just set, set, settle this aside. It also creates a problem with capitalism itself, with the economy, because the whole point of capitalism is supposed to be that, and, and most people won't be able to answer this question. They, they won't be able to finish that sentence. The whole point is that you have an interest in what goes on around you in your work. Now, the security guard gets paid no matter what. I don't know if he's part of a union. Uh, it wouldn't matter in this case because even whether he is or is not, he's going to get paid no matter what. And whether or not I paid that school in $100,000 that eventually made its way to his pocket is something that he just doesn't care about. In a normal society that's run, that runs on merit-based uh, promotion, that runs on merit-based employment, the idea is to have a stake. That every employee should have a stake in the outcome of the product. And in, in a case of a, of a nonprofit or a university, that outcome and that product involves your reputation. But it's also true, surprisingly, right, of a private corporation, let's say for-profit institution, because they both run on reputation. And what's happened now, you see in America, a attenuation between the workers, the capital, and the result. And a lot of people sort of have already identified this issue, but they're not really in a position where they're doing anything about it. So you've got a situation where the problem is obvious, and, and, and it's not as if you can give somebody a stake in, in, in the outcome. Uh, in other words, you know, the, the more money you make, it's not as if that security judge you know, is entitled to 1% of all the tuition payments. But there's got to be a way to align his interests with um, the reputation of the schools. And I don't have any ideas off the top of my head, but what's, what typically happens here is I'm the only one complaining about these policy changes that make no sense, right? That don't help make society better uh, and that really almost conflict with the idea of a nonprofit and their tax exemption. And because of that, because people sort of voluntarily tolerate this level of um, customer service and this level, low level of professionalism, you know, it creates a society where somebody else, the establishment, the people that poorly train the security personnel can point to someone else and say, now that guy is just a rabble rouser, that guy is just a troublemaker, uh, as opposed to a, a normal situation where, you know, this is this, you know, you're the gatekeeper, literally, to the campus and what, how you behave towards our alumni and, and how you behave when someone asks you, uh, you know, when someone acknowledges, hey, you know, I know you have to follow orders, uh, but, you know, get your supervisor on the phone and explain the situation to him. And if ultimately... You know, with that level of attenuation, you're going to see a lot of people that are, you know, that are sort of dissatisfied with the way things are going, especially on a campus that charges so much money um, to people that, to, you know, to people that come in and, and isn't necessarily involved in, um, you know, propaganda aside and advertising aside, isn't necessarily involved in making California or even the city of Santa Clara a better place, except through higher property prices as it's buying up land um, all over with the money that's coming in. So, you know, like I said, this is something that, that can, you, can, you can apply overall and say that you've got this level of attenuation on all levels of society, uh, and how do you fix it? And the first step, right, like I said, is, is to make sure that we all sort of complain uh, so that, you know, to, so the people who do complain legitimately are not in a position where they can be pointed out as, you know, outside of a, an established, um, outside of an, of an established resistance movement uh, to stupid rules, um, or just, you know, profiteering that makes no sense, uh, and, and that is discriminatory. And I think that's one of the reasons that Donald Trump won. That's one of, one of the reasons that people that are strongman rulers, that are people that are, you know, sort of appealing to this machismo, um, you know, ethic, 
uh, are winning worldwide is because people are just are becoming more less and less tolerant of these sorts of interactions. And it wouldn't happen necessarily in a small town. And it didn't happen to me in, in, even in a big city, like in Houston, Texas. Um, and I think that, you know, how do you get that level of, of, you know, sort of customer service back? How do you get that level of professionalism back? And there's, there's simply, there simply has to be a better way because what's going to happen is, you know, how do you, know, we're going to get into a society that is not working for anybody and that creates a gate against a lot of people whose voices should be heard. And so if you have somebody that's a gatekeeper that's not in a position where they're able to treat people who come in uh, with fairness, that has reputational consequences. And what's happened in, in, in America and in a lot of places, whether it's in airports, you know, in, in Western, in Europe, uh, mostly Western Europe, or in America, you're seeing this, this gatekeeping function usually held by security people. And in fact, uh, I think it's GS1 or G1S is one of the largest security firms, uh, employers worldwide. And so unless we all start complaining about the security state that doesn't seem to care about professionalism, whether it's something that's on a college campus or whether it's in an, in an airport, we're all going to be subject to whatever the establishment wants us to do. And that means, you know, it starts off with taking off our shoes, and next thing you know, you, you've got full body scanners that, you know, where, where the long-term consequences aren't necessarily studied very well. Um, and then who knows what's going on with the data and so on. We can all change that, you and me. We can all change that by opting out, um, but we, we can't do it on an individual basis. So one person, I think it's quite naive to think that one person can make a difference. But if we all sort of bond together and we all try to question rules, then I think we're in a position where we can at least get the attention of the people in power, because then they can't say it's just one person who's complaining. Everyone else is falling in line. Now, falling in line, of course, doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's, it may just mean that you know everyone else is, has become so used to lesser quality of services or increasing prices uh, without increasing services um, or quality um, that everyone's sort of on the same page, except for this one guy who's you know complaining. So I, I just urge you at the, at the end of the day to recognize the problems, right? Number one, attenuation. Number two, this, this idea that security is necessary but is being deployed worldwide on, on almost every level in ways that don't align worker interests with societal interests. Um, and also the idea that one person probably can't make a difference uh, on his or her own unless that person has support um, and from other people that at least recognize you know, when it's appropriate to question uh, certain rules. So anyway, that's what I have to say. Um, and thank you for, for listening, if you, if you have listened. And take care.